Let's meet our next speakers, uh, Patrick and Laura from Telefonica Deutschland. They are going to talk about why, how and what Telefonica Deutschland is uh, doing in the field of artificial intelligence. And they uh, have prepared some uh, slides, uh, some, let's say, live demos. So I hope it will be interesting for you. Thanks. Okay, hello everybody. So, um, sorry that we interrupted this uh, very interesting discussion um, about uh, the visual recognition. Um, but I promise you in our talk we will also have a little bit of a vi uh, visual recognition part uh, in it. So, um, we are going to talk about analytics and AI at uh, Telefonica Germany. So, what we are doing, why we are doing it, how we are doing it, and then um, we are going to present you uh, a little live demonstration about uh, some of the AI use cases that we implemented in Telefonica Germany. First of all, um, what is Telefonica Germany? You might uh, all know it, Vira um, is, a, is a daughter of Telefonica Germany, the host today. Um, that's also why we're here. And um, we are the, the biggest mobile telecommunications um, operator in Germany. So no one, no, none of the other operators connects more people with mobile <coughs> connections than, than we do. So statistically spoken, at least every second of you should be in touch with us, with one of our brands, like for example O2, our premium brand, or Blau, the non-premium brand, or some of the uh, wholesale or reseller ethic um, brands that we have. Um, and when you think of um, almost 50 million customers using telecommunication services every day, what do you think, how much network events, like uh, phone calls, SMSs, data connections, handovers from cell to cell, how many of those network connections do occur in our systems every day? Just give me a number. Don't be shy, give me a number. Oh, that's a lot. It's about 10 billion network events per day. I think this is quite a lot. Yeah? And especially when I was standing here two years ago for the Telefonica Data Challenge, which is on, my, on the back of my T-shirt, so the T-shirt is two years old, we, uh, we had the, the Telefonica Data Challenge here. I had more or less the same slide, but there was not 10 billion, but 4 billion. So um, the amount of network events in our network more than doubled in the last two years. So Moore's law totally holds for our network. Um, usually now I start telling the story about data and oil and refineries and data science, blah, 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 blah. But I think I don't have to do that. You all might know that data is the new oil and you cannot do anything with raw oil. You have to refine it. And <clears throat> we are the refinery in Telefonica, Germany. Our team, data analytics and artificial intelligence, we're trying to read the customer's wishes out of those 10 billion network events each day. And um, why we are doing this and what our vision is, I'm going to show you in a little video now, if it starts. Tens of billions of smart devices and smart sensors, the rise of smart networks, ubiquitous pervasive technology and social media are generating a rapidly expanding universe of data. We see industries navigating from product to customer-centric models, exploring automation, AI and machine learning, and we see a new generation of customers with more demanding needs and expectations. More data offers infinite opportunities to produce insights and values, boosting growth and innovation. Therefore, data analytics has realigned itself with these trends, evolving from operation to creation, from reducing costs to achieving growth and pioneering innovation. Data and connectivity are the central commodities of Telefonica's innovation. Data analytics affects the whole trajectory of all our central corporate processes. We, the Business Analytics and Artificial Intelligence team, facilitate data-driven decisions across all ranks and departments. We identify and analyze gaps and provide guidance with the help of data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. We confirm, expand or disprove our already existing knowledge and beliefs. We have a powerful data foundation providing real-time insights across all KPIs, offering raw data and deep dives for enhanced analysis. 
We offer holistic communication and collaboration around data, providing frameworks for prototyping, innovation and business incubation. We provide training, guidance and a community for citizen data scientists and data workers, enabling and empowering you with data access and the right analytical tools to generate your own insights. We help Telefonica Deutschland to transform insights into action and consequent implementation. We embed data analytics and AI in day-to-day -day workflows, making it consumable and translatable in order to secure its proper adoption. We provide data analytics from self-service activities up to an end-to-end -end analytical consulting approach. Data analytics will no longer be a single discipline, but will become an integral part of all our decision-making processes. Analytics and AI will provide the gravity of our organization, reaching across all spheres of communications and processes, departments and ranks, enabling real-time business decisions, exponential payoffs and innovation at the speed of light. We navigate Telefonica's journey into the deep space of data and beyond to discover whole galaxies of unknown value creation. Yeah, seems like the speaker in the video still was a bit tired from Oktoberfest, so sorry for the uh, technical issues that we had. Um, so actually, there was, there's, there's two reasons why we made this video. Reason number one was, as I already said, to show you what we're doing, why we're doing it, kind of our vision. And reason number two was, uh, yeah, to make a video of three minutes and put as many buzzwords as possible in it. Yeah. So um, to summarize, <clears throat> what is our mission? why we are there, why we are at Telefonica Germany, what are we doing. Um, yeah, we are trying to, to improve the corporate decision making in operative, strategic uh, and tactical decisions. We're also helping in, uh, in optimizing technical processes, business processes, and we're basing all that on analytical models, on artificial intelligence, on analytical consulting and lots of data. Actually, this slide didn't really change in the last 10 years since I'm at this company. Um, the artificial intelligence was not there. There was something like descriptive statistics or something or forecasting. And uh, the data part also was way smaller. There was like a huge part internal data and a very small part um, external data. So uh, our mission didn't really change, but our vision changed uh, a lot. Who are we? Um, we really exist. This is why I brought you some, uh, some pictures. We're about uh, 80 or even more data scientists, data engineers, data analysts, and um, we're delivering the analytical insights all across Telefonica Germany. So we are serving the classical consumer business as well as the partner business, the B2B business, but also like networks, um, IT, HR, corporate health management, the top management strategy, and so on and so forth. So if the B2C department wants to uh, improve the tariff portfolio, we're trying to read out of the data what the customers want in their tariffs. If the network department wants to optimize the network, we're reading out of the data where the network should be built, and so on and so forth. So um, we do not want to, to stand at our mission. We want to achieve our vision that was uh, shown in this uh, buzzword video. Um, about 10 years ago when I joined the company, we were at uh, Analytics 1.0. Traditional analytics, we're doing measuring, counting, uh, and so on and so forth. Mostly descriptive. We were business analysts, we were data analysts, and so on. Then a few years later, we stepped to the next step, advanced analytics. My team was called Advanced Analytics and Models. Uh, we had our first data scientist, really cool guy, running around in a t-shirt and jeans while the other ones were suits. Yeah. And now we're somewhere in between step number two and step number three. So step number three is what the video showed. Rapid insights providing real business impact. The analytical insight is there where it's needed, directly at the decision making of the company, directly in the processes of the company. So we need real time. Uh, we need deep learning, we need machine learning, and so on and so forth, all integrated into the processes of the company. And um, the good thing about our department is we do not just have a vision and a mission, we also have kind of a roadmap to get from here to there, and that's um, what I'm going to show you on the next slide. There is five important steps, five elements on our roadmap from the mission to the vision. Um, there is and there will always be Analytics 1.0. 
There always will be analytical services and consulting. There always will be a department that asks a question that can be solved with descriptive statistics or linear regression, where we don't need a neural network. And we see from the problem-solving side if we need one or if we don't. And if we don't, we don't use it. We're using traditional analytical services and consulting. That's absolutely clear. Then we have kind of the second layer, cognitive intelligence platform and the deep learning platform. That's the AI part. And uh, this is where we're going to go into a little bit more details on the following slides. And on the base layer, there is the way how to turn the insights that we gain into actions. This is why we have an analytical insight center for data democratization and a digital data analytics platform for citizen data science at Telefonica Germany, <coughs> where everybody can access the data and build their own data science models. So focus today is uh, on the AI layer, because this is the AI summit and not the analytics summit. Um, and we have two parts. We have the cognitive intelligence platform, which is like kind of the sensory organs of our AI. And we have the deep learning platform, which is kind of the brain. Yeah? <clears throat> so first of all, um, let's get to the sensory organs. And when you think of cognitive intelligence, most of you, most of everybody, might think of NLP, image recognition, buzzwords like this. And uh, one company that does it quite well is, uh, is Google. And I'm going to show you quickly. Most of you might know it. It's uh, the Google images search. So not you type in something and you get some images from it, but up here there is images. And then you can upload an image and uh, Google looks for similar images uh, in the web. So I'm just taking myself for the moment, um, uploading this picture. And then you see there is uh, quite a lot of guys out there that look uh, kind of similar to me. Yeah? That's what, what Google is doing. And we're also doing some visual recognition stuff. And uh, therefore, I'm going to go into our Google, which is uh, our analytical insight center, and um, search the analytical insight center for Here is cognitive intelligence. Um, let's see what he finds. Nothing. That's not good. Come on. Ah. So here, explore online media with cognitive intelligence. And this is one of our use cases where we use cognitive intelligence. It is to look through everything that is written in professional media, like chip or, I don't know, tel tarif. Uh, and other telecommunication-related um, magazines online. And we explore this um, uh, concerning uh, domains, entities, concepts, keywords, um, sentiments, categories, and so on and so forth. And uh, since I'm a positive person, I'm going to filter on uh, positive sentiments for the moment and just look like what is written in the media in the last few days about uh, the telecommunication markets that was positive. So, yeah more power in the base stations, uh, something new, this is positive for Vodafone, maybe not for us. This is something that is positive for us. Here are new tariff O2U, uh, nice that it is positive. So um, it's also looking at the pictures in the, um, um, in the articles and uh, classifies this in categories, like um, we live in, in this tower next to Olympiastadion, so it is a high-rise building, it's a tower. He recognizes that it is an office building, that it must be some kind of a telecom hotel because we sleep there, um, and it's our headquarters, yeah? So this is what uh, this, uh, this machine finds from the uh, visual recognition stuff. And um, you also can do, like, analyze it and, and look at it by the social tone and see that this uh, is a very uh, agreeable artist and stuff like this. And this is used by our external communications department. Um, so they don't have to read every single article and think themselves, um, how is it written, is it good, is it bad, what is the, the kind of the mood in the, in the media at the moment. But they can use this tool and uh, just have it in a nutshell. Um, the good thing is, we're not only offering this service, but since we're a company that uh, focuses a lot on, on data democratization, and data science democratization, the companies, uh, the, 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 the business units uh, can also use the tools behind this tool uh, on their own. Like, for example, a visual recognition tool. Um, so they can just take uh, images 
upload the image. Uh, I'll just take the same one again to see what this one uh, finds out. Um, upload this image and then get like a description of uh, what is in this image. And yes, it's a man with a shaven head. He has a mustache and it's a walrus mustache. I didn't know that before, but it must be if uh, Watson, uh, IBM Watson, where this is based on, is uh, saying. So let me get back to the presentation. Um, we're, we're using um, this, this, this whole Watson API for some some other stuff like our Google, our analytical insight center, you can also, our, our employees can also talk to him or her um, through our uh, chatbot that we implemented uh, and uh, some other use cases. We're also doing this for uh, social media, not just for prof professional media. We're having some, some quite uh, extensive uh, social media analytics tool uh, going on with sentiments, with visual recognition and so on and so forth that everybody in the company knows how the mood in the social media about us, about our competitors, about tariffs, about handsets, and so on is, uh, that we also use in our analytical and AI models. And last but not least, we implemented uh, a virtual marketing assistant so that uh, the marketing guys in the company don't have to read through thousands of reports to get the most important figures out, but they get an email each week with the, uh, the most important uh, figures written in prosa, but not by a person, but by Vima, our virtual assistant. So um, this is, I think, a good moment to hand over to the brain, and the brain is uh, Laura in this case. Thanks, Patrick. Yes. So we are very much concerned about uh, anomaly detection at Telefonica. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, yes. So here in this chart, um, might anybody give us a guess where the anomaly is? It's, yeah. It's, uh, I knew you would say this. Ah, okay, so this is the first guess. Um, yeah, everybody, I think, or most of the people in this room might think there's the anomaly. But, or, but if I had told you that I'm not interested in outliers, uh, but interested in level shifts, then probably the anomaly would be somewhere else. It would be maybe around here. Let me give you another picture. So... Again, quest, uh, same question again. Where would you find the anomaly? Yes, uh, same. Uh, it's very, or it seems quite obvious. It's the fish going in the, uh, in the other direction. But same here, that's concerning direction. If I told you I want to find the anomaly concerning color or size, it would be somewhat different. So what I'm trying to tell here is that anomaly always depends on the context. It always depends on the use case you're trying to solve. Seems easy sometimes, but yeah, you need to see the whole picture. And in these cases, it was quite easy for our eyes to find the anomaly. Here, actually, you can still find an anomaly. If you get more and more data points, it gets impossible for a human. And that's where we use machine learning and deep learning. And as Patrick told you before, we have, we like an internal consultancy, so our customers are the business units, and for example, for the um, online department, we uh, did uh, a monitoring. So we're monitoring the O2 online site, there are thousands of configurations you can make every time a new tariff comes in, a new hardware comes in, you, uh, they manually configure this website. And as you know, with manual configuration, uh, there can be lots of errors. So what we do is we use different KPIs and monitor their time series over time. For example, page views, conversion rate, but also KPIs like average uh, time spent on one page. So we monitor all those time series and um, when the new iPhone Rose Gold was released, we actually saw some very big anomaly in conversion rate. So of course the page views, they rose, everything rose, but the conversion rate, which dropped dramatically. We had another KPI monitoring, um, which gave us the, the ratio between, um, uh, sorry, uh, the ratio between um, total page views and uh, no, the ratio between people putting the iPhone in their shopping cart and actually buying it. So, has anybody a guess what had happened here? The iPhone was the gold. There was something obviously going wrong. Sorry. Uh, 
Um, maybe. But here actually we had this new letter, E. You know, E with this accent aigu, rosé gold. And it was the first time we had this letter, I think, on, on the page. So that was causing that people put the iPhone in their shopping cart, but they couldn't pursue and buy it, actually. There was coming an error. So we detected this in real time. Probably the department would have seen it also sometime later, but we detected it in near real time and helped them to see it very early. And actually, to, at the end, to save grassets. Another use case actually um, uh, concerns our network. Um, so we have like 40,000, 50,000 network elements in Telefonica, so those are antennas. Um, and all, yeah, we want them to work fine. Um, so we also use different KPIs to monitor their performance, like download speed, upload speed, um, call rates, etc. So at the end, we have like, I think, around 50 KPIs per network element. We monitor their time series. Um, and that sums up to almost one million time series each day. Oops. Yeah, okay. Um, so I already showed you two use cases uh, where we use time series um, uh, analysis, and there are much more we're using. So our, our idea was not to build everything new from scratch, but to build a platform where we can deal with all kinds of time series problems where we want to use anomaly detection. So first of all, in this, this is the fr uh, framework. First of all, you have the time series generator. So usually you have a starting point and an end point of some KPI. And first of all, we need to generate this data points in between the time series. Then we have the feature detector. Usually in time series, you might know we decompose um, the time series into a seasonal trend and remainder part. Um, after this, we already get whether the, time, the data point we're scoring at that moment is an anomaly or not. But that's not enough. Because, for example, every time a new hardware is released, lots of KPIs show an anomaly. But should it generate an action from the online department? Probably no, it's totally normal, it's fine. So what we're doing is to filter the anomalies to the ones we really want to detect and send to our customers. So we use a classifier, um, we add in other features like for example holidays, um, yeah, some special event, events where we know probably some KPIs will go high. And after this, uh, we have a decision maker, so it's actually the threshold where we say, okay, this should be now an alarm, which we send to the online department or not, and we deliver this through our Tableau dashboard. So, who of you has worked with Tableau? Yeah. Okay. Also, we, we love working with Tableau. It's very easy and flexible, but there was one feature missing for us. The feature that our customer can interact with us can give us something back through the dashboard. So what we did was to write a R Shiny application, put it into ta uh, Tableau, so that our customers at the end can tell us if the alarm we gave them actually was right or not. So they label actually our results. And we put it back into our database and improve our algorithm. Because in a lot of problems we see in Telefonica, um, we have lots of data, but uh, also the data is of high quality, but the labels are lots of time missing or of, are of low quality. So that's actually what we use to, um, to get feedback from our customer. And as you see here, it's a very, very big chain. We're doing this, um, or we have established this now for time series problem. We're now focusing on event-based problems, so we're building um, another framework just for yeah, event-based problems. And as you see, there are so many different steps which demand lots of different skills and perspectives. Um, so we're at Telefonica, but also in our department, very much focused on hiring diverse people because we think we need these skills, we need different 
perspectives. And how do you know if somebody or a team is diverse? You usually map it to some attributes, nationality, eth ethnic, uh, background, age, but also gender. So in the following, I'm showing you how we um, support gender diversity within Telefonica. So a colleague and I, we founded um, a community. Um, it's focusing on gender diversity, but we just want to generally raise awareness towards um, diversity and that we need it. So here you see, for example, my colleague and me, we both founded it, but we also have Sponsor, she's um, a board member um, of Telefonica. And what we do is, yeah, raise awareness, we have a women's network, um, we focus on career topic on um, events. We started in March and currently uh, we have, our community has 230 members, so it's around 10% of the Munich-based employees. Okay, that's our goal for the end of the year. Um, and yeah, one point to our vision, because it's very important. Uh, it's not about getting women now everywhere and getting at least 50% women in all of the positions. It's rather about the mix. And here we say our mix, our goal, our vision is to establish a 40-60 percentage gender ratio. So no gender should be more than 60% in a team or whatever. So I think this is quite a nice idea and our role model here is Iceland. They ex actually have a law for this for yeah, companies more than 50 um, employees. And what do we do now to um, reach this vision? First of all, we focus internally, but also ex um, external. Interne internally, we uh, do networking events, for example, once a month. We do some meetups where we discuss topics from different areas. Um, we invite inspiring people um, um, just to, yeah, to share knowledge and also to give role models because um, I can tell from my perspective, so seeing is believing. So if you have somebody similar doing already a job, maybe you want to do it, it's uh, always helpful, helpful to see uh, role models. And externally, for example, we go on yeah, events like this here or some other career meetups and we just want to um, yeah, raise uh, enthusiasm of uh, new employees. So you see we focus on recruitment, development, um, and retention in Telefonica. And that's actually my last uh, yeah, uh, part. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. You are asking if the decomposition is a model or if... Yeah. Okay, so the question was how much... Um, your domain knowledge is inside the feature detector, like, yeah, to, to decompose. Yeah, so actually the decomposition part is, the first approach is always to do this the same for all use cases. So actually we do it with few domain knowledge, but the domain low knowledge comes into the, um, comes in when we do the classifier. Because there you really need to know when an anomaly should be an alarm, like what is not, what is normal, what is not, and also there you need different other features. Yes. Okay. And also, yeah, just to come back to your question, you, I told you that the customers label our data, label which one should be an alarm or not, but we need to start somewhere. So actually what I do uh, some, yeah, in some cases, um, because I'm working very closely with the uh, um, business units, I do the initial labeling and just try to get started and then the customer will do it. So you need domain knowledge. 
Okay, maybe because we're over the time already uh, quite a bit, just one last question and then uh, um, we're going to hand over to the next one. I just wanted to know if uh, that tool that you, that you showed to us uh, was open for the public or not, kind of. Uh, the tool is open to the Telefonica public, but not to the public public. So this is something where we uh, we pay for. We also put some intelligence, some uh, intellectual property in it. So uh, you cannot use it. You can build it your own if you want to. So <laughs> Okay, um, we will be here for the rest of the day, at least uh, until lunch. Uh, I'll be here until the end of the event. So if you have any more questions, uh, just uh, tap on my shoulders. Many thanks to all of you for sharing this day with us. This year's Munich AI Summit was devoted to the role of women in AI. Looking forward to Munich AI Summit 2020. See you next year. <laughs>